service. We're expecting the Lord to do great things. Let's stand and invite the Lord's presence into the service tonight. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before your presence with thanksgiving. We enter to your courts with praise, Lord. For, Lord, thou art worthy to be praised, thou art worthy to be worshipped, and thou art worthy to be adored tonight. Father, Lord, we just come to worship you and praise you. We ask you tonight that your Holy Spirit would be poured out among us, that you would move among our hearts, that you would move among our lives. Bless every part of the service tonight, Lord. Bless the girls' club and boys' club and youth and children and everything that happens tonight. Let it be blessed of God and anointed of God. Bless the song service this morning, the praise and worship. Father, Lord, just anoint tonight and bless tonight, Lord. We give you the thanks, the praise, and the glory, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Remain standing and let's worship the Lord tonight.
won't let Satan blow it out. And I'm gonna let it shine, let it
just lift your hands and love on thee, Father. We thank you for it tonight. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege we have to be in your house on a Wednesday night. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us that you are still Lord. God, I choose to bend my knee. I choose to confess you. Lord, and I'm thankful for that tonight. Lord, those that decide not to do it tonight, one day, Lord, they will confess. They will bend their knee. They will realize that you are Lord and you are great. Lord, I'm thankful tonight that you are my Lord and you are my Savior. You are my King. Lord, and you are my protection. Help us and guide us and direct us in this place tonight. We'll forever give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Everybody said amen and amen. Greet your neighbor as you're seated tonight. Welcome them to the house of the Lord on a Wednesday night. So delighted that you are here with us. God has been good to us and we're so thankful for that. Thankful for you and thankful for all that God is doing amongst us tonight. And uh, those of you over on this side, you look a little bit closer to me than you've been in the past. Amen. And uh, so, so thankful that you are being cooperative with us tonight as uh, they moved all them uh, uniforms in and uh, the day has just been, the week, the week has just been long. And I said, you know what, I think they'll be fine there. No sense in hauling them all out just to haul them all back in after church. And uh, I appreciate you being flexible. It's been a wonderful week on campus. The staff has been like busy little ants just roaming around this place. Uh, doing what needs to be done, and I'm delighted to be a part of that and uh, uh, be praying for us. Uh, they have one more big day tomorrow and uh, open a house, meet the teacher, and all that stuff, orientation tomorrow night. Friday morning, we'll be loading up, driving our daughter to Ohio, so be praying for Wendy and I and uh, Cherith that we'll have travel and mercy there, and then for Wendy and I to have travel and mercy, peace and comfort coming home, amen. And uh, we were with brother and sister Maynard today and uh, spent some time with them and Sister Maynard said, well, just bring some good stories to tell. Remember them. Write them down because coming home, you may need to, something to help you get through that. She didn't help me none, that's for sure. And uh, so I was so delighted that we were able to spend some time with them today. And I was able to be with Brother Rex today. And um, he is better. Some of you know that he was in the hospital for a few days and recovered this weekend. He said, will you go back with me to just to make sure another set of ears and eyes is always good. And so he said, will you go with me to that follow appointment? And I said, yep. So we had a great report. Uh, no further, nothing needed, no change in medication. Just do what you're doing and, and uh, see you back in three months or five months, whatever they said. So uh, thank you for your prayers for him and continue to do that. Good to see Brother uh, Wilmer G. I think he just walked out on me, but good to see him back in church tonight and Sister uh, Donna as well. I know um, he's been facing some things as well, but God's good to us. Amen. He'll help us. He'll strengthen us. And glad that you're here tonight. Uh, don't forget about Sunday morning, Sunday night. Sunday night is part of our service. We'll have prayer for students. And, and uh, how many of you remember, it's been several years ago now. I, I don't even know if, I, I think you were coming then. But Hong Yang, do you remember Hong Yang? He's the guy from China. He's about this, about this tall. Remember Hong Yang? Uh, Hong Yang is back in Florida. And uh, not this Sunday night, but next Sunday, the 20th, um, Han Yang will be with us. And so we're delighted to have him. Um, so if you have uh, never uh, been in church with Han Yang, uh, it will be a night to remember. I'll just say it that. But he and his wife, Esther, um, are, uh, are uh, both going to both be in Florida that weekend. And and uh, he and Esther both will be with us, and uh, it will be. It will. We will have a good time. And uh, he is just a. Uh, just uh, there's only one Hong Yang, and uh, we were able to confirm that today with him. And so I wanted to share that with you. They'll get it up on social media and up on uh, our website. Uh, but so thankful for that, and looking forward to that's the twentieth, and uh, just so looking forward to what God's doing. I do ask that you uh, just uh, call those that are missing church. Uh, and encourage them we've had a lot just a lot of people that a lot of moving pieces we know schools get ready to start and that's some of it but i encourage them to be back in the house of the lord on sunday and uh, let's just come together i'll be out sunday morning but i'll be uh listening uh, probably via uh facebook live with you and uh, as i'm as i'm driving or riding i might ride more than i drive this weekend and uh, let mama wendy just cruise me to ohio and cruise me back in that camry amen and, uh, but be praying for us. We are, we are planning, if we're not here Sunday morning, which I don't think we're going to make it back that fast, 
uh, we will plan to be with you uh, Sunday night uh, for prayer and service and and then we will hit the ground running Monday morning with 125 or 27 whatever it is uh, kids on this campus and uh, let me just pause and say uh, thank you to those staff members at uh, 10 church here uh, you have went above and beyond this week and uh, those guys that have worked for weeks on in the Robs the Dustins uh, uh, those people are just priceless and uh, they have just done hours and hours and hours and uh, and uh, it is amazing what what we can do we put our mind to work and I'm thankful for that and um, yeah, we're I, I haven't asked about this but well we have rooms open Sunday for tours uh, we can do that so a lot of good things everything got painted and uh, new stuff was built and it's just been a great 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 few days so maybe we can open a few of them up for you to look at if you've never seen them uh, in full mode and uh, I'm so excited about that come on Pastor Rick and I think I got all the announcements but if not uh, you can uh, pull up the slack there help me out and uh, and lead us into offering amen don't forget next Wednesday night Wednesday night meals start back <laughs> Let me talk about that for a moment. See, I told you I needed you to help me. Um, l let me do this. That way you get up upset with no one but me. Because um, Pastor Rick's going to mention this on Sunday. And by then you'll have already prayed through about it. So you can help the others. Uh, but back in February, our leadership at our leadership meeting, which comprises of, uh, I don't know, 18 or 20 folks, um, this came up, that the, the, the Wednesday night meals came up. And we do it only... Uh, as a as a way to, to raise a little bit of money but it also is a very it's, it's convenient for my family i don't have to worry about where i'm eating at on wednesday nights i just know whatever they serve is what i'm getting um but we've done this for i don't know four years probably i don't it's been a long time and uh and that price has been four dollars for four years and we've never changed that and that came up in february so um go ahead and get ready to suck all of the oxygen out of this room okay uh, there will be a price increase on Wednesday night meals for the first time in four or five years. Maybe we should go back. Maybe you need to know that number on Sunday morning uh, where you can say we've not price increased in, in five years or whatever it is. But uh, we're going to go up a dollar, okay? Can everybody save a dollar and, and, and help me there? And so it will, be, uh, it will be $5 for those that are 12 and older. Um, the $3 will be $4 for those kids. And we're still going to cap it. We'll still cap it at twenty dollars a family, and uh, and the, so if you got four of them, you know that are the youth size or older, um, you know that's 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 sixteen. That's twenty bucks, and you can't go to McDonald's and buy four meals twenty. I, I know that. I just went to McDonald's, bought two hamburgers, a small fry, and a dollar drink, and it was over four bucks. And uh, you get a whole lot better food here than two hamburgers, a small fry, and a large drink. And so, so go ahead and just pray through over that. But uh, next, and, and don't beat up the kitchen people, and don't beat up the clerk. I mean, Christians don't act like that, okay? And, uh, but, but you'll see it in your bulletin. It's going to say, it's not a typo, it is right. Uh, it'll be $5 per person, $4 for children 11 and under, and a max of 20, okay? And, uh, and if you have hard problems with that, if you'll contact me privately, I'll help you. Uh, but I'm gonna, if I'm going to help you, I'm going to ask you where else you spend your money. And I think uh, we probably could find a few extra dollars. Uh, uh, you know, uh, a Polar Pop is 84 cents, if I remember correctly. Is that right, Mariah? No? 89. See, that makes it even better. 89 cents. So, so I don't know what they are. They're, they're about a buck. So uh, just, just let me be the bearer of bad news. It's my fault. I agreed to it. Now i got to own up to it. So uh, help your neighbor. And if you don't come to breakfast on next Wednesday night, we won't think bad of you. Uh, we'll just think you put your dollar somewhere else, okay? That's all we're going to think, and uh, it just helps us out. And uh, all this money has been going to ladies' ministries. And uh, what we did is, you know, we got away from those Sunday. We were eating a whole lot around here, uh, Sundays and Wednesdays, and, and, and we didn't need to do all that. It's not healthy, uh, first of all, and it's a lot of work uh, to get all that set up. So we backed off those Sunday meal functions after Sunday nights. It's just you got a long-winded preacher who don't shut up before 8 o'clock, and and it just gets late so uh we we let, allowed the ladies because the ladies help us with other projects to to use us wednesday night and so when you're given to that you're given to women's ministries and uh the last thing we bought was a new stove for the fellowship hall and so uh what we did is we split that 50 50 the the ladies bought half and 
uh, the uh, operating fund paid the other half, and and for what they got for half price, I mean, we we did pretty good, amen. So uh, they're happy, and if you keep those women in that kitchen happy, we're doing good. We want them to cook. I have promised them a brand new kitchen, full commercial, everything. I didn't tell them when. I just said I just said we're going to get one one day. So uh, you be praying for that as well. But but Wednesday night meals. Thank you, Pastor. Are going up. Come on. I'm done. <laughs> Amen. Our 62nd homecoming is coming up in October, Saturday and Sunday. 62 years, Okoy Church has God has been here ministering and touching hearts and lives. Next Sunday night is our prayer for students. Uh, so bring your children, your grandchildren, your nephews, your nieces, your neighbors. Uh, everyone needs kids just going to school needs prayer especially if they're going to public school uh, they definitely need prayer so uh, don't forget to do that praise team practice will be resuming in September and I think that's it don't forget pray invite grow uh, we've switched it this time if your name is A through L you pray for the third column now uh, J through R you pray for the first column S through Z, you pray for the middle column. So we switched it around to give you a change of things that you're praying for. So do not forget to pray, invite, grow. Okay, children, junior praise team and junior ushers. I said, children, they all looked at me. I said, we're not children, we're juniors. <laughs> I thought Tyler was coming up to sing. He's just coming up to be an usher. <laughs> he looks sharp with his tie on tonight. <laughs> oh, he has. <laughs> Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the opportunity we have to give tonight as we bring your tithes and our offering to you tonight. I pray that you bless it and honor it and use it for your glory and your honor. Bless the junior praise team and the junior ushers as they do their job tonight and minister for you, Lord. Just touch it and bless it tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. Amen. Girls club and boys club can be dismissed. The children can be dismissed. Walk, not run. Power in prayer. 
as we unite together in prayer, God moves and God changes hearts and changes lives. Amen. We want to go to the Lord in prayer tonight for our prayer request. Do we have any prayer requests on my right side over here that we need to remember tonight? Sister Nikki. Same one that was broke before. Yeah, the same one that was before. Just remember, both of these in prayer. Amen. Anyone else? Amen. Sister Helen. Praise the Lord. Sister Julie's going for cancer surgery tomorrow. So remember her in prayer. That's in Alabama. As we pray here, God's able to touch there in Alabama. Amen. Sister Joyce. Don. Okay. Any others on my right side, Sister? Sister Lily, yes. Continue, remember Sister Lily. And Brother Jean? Uh-huh. Okay. Just remember Sister Susie in prayer. Uh-huh. Sister Tanya? Remember Ricky in prayer. Leslie, Sister Nala, yes, and the Sister Love in prayer. Amen. Any others? How about on my left side over here, Sister Juanita? We need this family in prayer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sister Rebecca? Okay. Okay. Yes, school starts on Monday, so pray for students and staff. Sister Kara?
remember these requests. Brother Jerry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. Any others? Let's remember all of our unsaved loved ones. Continue to pray for Okoy Church of God for revival. We definitely need revival in our hearts and in our lives. Let's stand and take these needs to the Lord in prayer tonight. Father God, we just thank you. We praise you. We love you tonight. Father, Lord, you said where two or three are gathered together in your name. We agree on anything that shall be done. Father, Lord, we bring these needs. We bring these requests to you tonight. We thank you for the report we heard about Brother Rex, Lord. We just pray that you continue to touch him and completely minister to him, Lord. We pray for Sister Lily, that you continue to give her a speedy recovery and that you would completely touch her and minister to her, Lord. Father, Lord, we pray for Sister Jean Stearns, Lord, that you would continue to let your healing power to flow through her body and touch her and minister to her, Lord. We pray for Sister Susie, Lord, that you're able to touch her and minister to her, Lord. Father, Lord, let her to heal properly from the surgery that she had, Lord. Heal her and touch him, Lord. We pray for Brother Oscar that you touch him and minister to him, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, this leakage he has, Lord, you're able to heal him. You're able to block this leakage and stop it, Lord, leaking in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we pray for Julie, Lord, uh, Brother Ashbury's sister, as she has sur cancer surgery tomorrow, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you lead and guide the doctor's hands, Lord, that you let there be no problems or no difficulties, Lord. Heal and touch, Lord. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, touch Brother Don tonight, Lord. Completely heal him and touch him, Lord. Touch Sister Saster, Lord, and Sister Myra, Lord. Father, Lord, meet every need in our heart and every need in our life, Lord. Touch Sister Leslie's request, Lord, tonight, Lord. Father, Lord, just touch them and minister to them in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, touch Brother Jerry, Lord. Continue to heal him and touch him, Lord. Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus, touch Sister Winita's family, Lord. Father, Lord, as she lost her, mom, her sister, Lord. Father, Lord, we thank the Lord that she was a believer, that she's a Christian. We know where she's at, Lord. But, Lord, we pray that you comfort this family, Lord, that you minister to their hearts and minister to their lives, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray for Sister Joyner, Lord. Father, Lord, that you'd let your healing power to flow through her body and touch her. Father, Lord, we thank you for Kara's, uh, Father, getting saved and giving her heart and life to the Lord, Lord. Father, Lord, we thank you for their hell and having the opportunity to witness and uh, share the love of God to someone, Lord. We pray that you just minister to their heart and minister to their life, Lord. Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus, touch uh, Brother Gene, Lord. Father, Lord, you're able to just completely heal him and touch him, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. We praise you, Lord. Father, Lord, we pray for unsaved loved ones, Lord. We pray for sinners, Lord. We pray for the lost, Lord. Father, Lord, we pray for our school, Lord, for the teachers, Lord, as they have uh, meet the teacher tomorrow night, Lord. I just pray that you let it be a blessed time and an anointed time, Lord. Be with them as they start back to school on Monday, Lord. Just touch the teachers and the students and all and everything to come back well, Lord. We pray that you be with Pastor and Sister Wendy and and uh, cherry lord as they drive tomorrow lord that you would give them traveling mercies lord on friday lord that you give them traveling mercies as they travel this weekend lord father lord as they take cherry up to school lord father lord we just pray that you'd be with her that you would strengthen her that you would touch her that you would lead her that you would guide her lord that you anointed the holy ghost would rest upon her lord Father, Lord, give them traveling mercies back. And, Lord, we just pray that you touch and meet every need in every situation. Father, Lord, we thank you for hearing our prayers. We thank you for answering them, Lord. We thank you that you're still on the throne, Lord. And there's nothing impossible for you, Lord. 
Father, Lord, we just thank you and we praise you and we love you for it, Lord. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We praise 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 you, Lord. Amen. You may be seated tonight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let's open our Bible tonight to the book of Acts, chapter 3. You want to read the same story that me and Christy read a couple weeks ago as we talked to you about what do we have to give. Uh, Christy shared the first part and gave some illustrations. Abraham sacrificing his son and the uh, woman with the all they gave the all and the Lord provided for the family and the, then we looked in uh, Peter uh, the feeding of the 5,000 with the lad given his fish and his bread away the Lord took it and multiplied we looked at the woman that uh, uh, anointed Jesus' feet and gave it and we learned that, that he was teaching the disciples that it's not all about money it's not all, all about uh, spick nerd and all this expensive stuff. What it is is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the answer that we need in our hearts and our lives. Let us pray tonight. Father God, we need your touch. We need your anointing. We need your power. We need your presence. Let your Shekinah glory of God to rest tonight in a mighty and a special way. Father, Lord, we need you tonight. We need you tonight. We need you tonight. We need you. You're the answer. You're the problem. You're the solution to every problem that we have. And Father, Lord, we need you in our hearts. We need you in our lives, Lord. Father God, in the name of Jesus, touch us tonight, Lord. Father, Lord, let my tongue to be as a pen of a ready writer. Lord, the things that you've been speaking to my heart and things that you've been dealing with me about, Lord. Father, Lord, I pray that you let me to speak forth the things that you have put into my heart, Lord. And I pray that you would stir our hearts and stir our lives tonight, Lord. That you're able to touch us and anoint us and bring us closer to you and deeper to debts and higher heights with you than we've ever been before tonight. And Lord, we give you the thanks and the praise and the glory, Lord. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Acts chapter 3, you can remain seated. Verse number 1. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at that ninth at the, at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful. He was laid there daily. This is something that happened every day. Every day he was laid at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, to ask for money, to ask for help. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms, seeing Peter and John and uh, uh, treated him like they did everybody else and asked him for alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. Peter and John both looked at this lame man, looked at him, fastening his eyes upon him, and said, Look unto us. Now I imagine this lame man got excited then because someone was paying him some attention. Someone was looking at him and telling him to look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. He was expecting to receive some money, expecting to receive some alms, but he got more than he ever imagined. He got more than he ever dreamed. He got his heart's uh, life and everything met in this one need. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I not. You remember we told you a couple weeks ago that when, Peter, when Jesus fed the 5,000 and uh, the lad had this few fish and this few loaves that Stephen and them said, 
how can this feed this mass of people? Jesus said unto them and taught them that money is not the problem. Money is not the issue. Jesus took it and blessed it and gave it out. And there was enough there to feed 5,000 people. Then we look and we see that the woman with the, the, the anointed Jesus' feet, they said, this could have been given and sold to help someone in need. Jesus said, do you not realize that silver and gold, all of these things, does it matter? What have, matters is that she is anointing me, anointing me for my death and burial and resurrection. She is looking to the future and looking to see that Jesus is her answer, that Jesus is her solution, and Jesus is her problem. Tonight, Jesus is the answer for everything that we need. Jesus is the solution for everything that we go through. And then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, Give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. You see the things that he does unto him? First of all, he speaks to them and says, Silver and gold have I none, such as I have I give unto thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. What did he give them? Jesus. I don't have silver, I don't have gold, but what I have, I give unto you. What did he give? In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Jesus is what this world needs. Jesus is what your family needs. Jesus is what your unsaved loved ones need. Jesus is what this world needs. It's Jesus and we have the answer. We have the solution to give unto them. And Peter and John said, silver and gold I have none, but I have what you need and that is Jesus. So first of all, he spoke to them. And then what did he do? He took them by the right hand lifted him up. Now, he, first of all, he spoke to him and said, in the name of Jesus, get up and walk. Then he said, helped him. Took him by the hand. Let's help you get up. And then what did he do once he got up? He said, and he took him by the hand, right hand, and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle ball received strength. What would have happened if only Peter would have spoke to him and not stretched out his hand and lifted him up? Sometimes we need to lift our hands up to help people. We need to give them Jesus. We need to let them know that Jesus is their solution. He said, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. But then he had to take them say, hey, I'm here to help you. I have what you need. It's not silver and gold. It's Jesus. So now he picked him up and he helped him get to his feet. He helped him walk. And as soon as he helped him up, as soon as he lifted up, what happened? Immediately his feet and ankle bones received his strength. So what does he do? First of all, he spoke into his life. Spoke Jesus into his life. And then he put, he put action to his words. And he said, picked him up and said, I said, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. He helped him up. And as soon as he got to his feet, immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And what did he do? He leaping up, stood and walked. And he went into the temple walking and leaping and praising God. Can you imagine every day of his life sitting out there wanting to go in the temple but not able to because he was lame. But now this one time he got what he was always wanting to be able to go into the temple and worship and praise God. What did he do? He entered into the temple walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. 
And they knew that it was he which set for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which he had happened unto him. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together into them in the porch that, in, that is called Solomon, greatly wondering about God. Now last week when we looked at this, we looked at it and said, what was Jesus teaching Peter? What was he teaching him? He was teaching him it's not silver, it's not gold, it's not worldly possessions, but it's Jesus. Now as, he, as we talk to you about such as I have, give I thee. And we talk to you about what do you have to give? Talked to you last week about what he had to learn. Now, what did he have to do to get what he had? If you look at Peter, if you look at Peter's life, remember he was a fisherman. The Lord called him right at the very beginning. He was one of the first disciples that he called. He said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. He was a fisher a fish. And he said, I will make you a fisher of men. What was he doing in this instant here? Fishing for men. He had the answer. Jesus. He had the answer. Jesus. So he presented him Jesus. Sister Helen done today what we're supposed to do. Share the love of Jesus Christ to a lost and challenging world. This is what Pastor challenged us to do Sunday morning. Share the love of God to someone. Share the love of God to someone. But as we look at Peter's life, we look at him and we see that he had problems. He had weaknesses. He had difficulties. He had problems. He followed the, He was one of the disciples the whole time. Three and a half years he walked with Jesus. Three and a half years he seen everything that Jesus did. Three and a half years he was there with him and seen all the miracles and seen everything that he did. But as we look at this, we see... What, let's look at Peter. What did Peter do? Peter said, I will follow you to the ends of the world. She told Jesus, I will follow you. I will go to prison. I'll give my life. I'll do everything. Jesus said, before the cock crows three times, you will deny me. Oh, never I will deny you. I will serve you until the ends of this world. What happens? They come and take Jesus. Peter follows him. What happens? They see him. Said, that's one of his disciples. No. That's one of his disciples. No. The third time, that's one of his disciples. And this time, what does he do? He gets mad and shows his vile self and cusses and curses and, and says words that he shouldn't be saying. He was a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. He was a disciple. And he's out there cussing. Then as soon as it happened, the cock crew. And what did he do? He remembered what the Lord said to him. He went and golf by himself and cried and said, Lord, help me in my weakness. So we see that G Peter had weaknesses. He had problems. Even uh, at the death and burial and the resurrection, Mary and them goes and tells Peter and John that uh, uh, he's alive. What do they do? Peter and John run. They run to the temple. They run to the tomb to find out about him. John got there first because he was younger and he didn't go in. He just looked. But Peter went all the way in and looked. But you know what? It said he still did not believe. He went away wanting what they did with him. Where was he at? It took him that Jesus had to come where he was. In the upper room, he had to come to the room and said, Peter. He came in the midst of them and said, Peace. We have storms in our life. We have challenges in our life. We have weaknesses in our life. We have times when we have doubt and unbelief. But in them times of need, that's when Jesus comes and lifts us up and said, Peace be unto you. So we see this, that uh, he had problems. He had weaknesses. He had difficulties. Even after this, after Jesus comes and talks to him, he finds himself going fishing. 
And when he he tells his disciples, let's go fishing, I'm going fishing. So they go out fishing, and then Jesus is at the shore. John tells them it's Jesus. He has to throw his clothes on. He's out there fishing naked. He has to throw his clothes on. And then they realize it was Jesus, and Jesus said, have you caught anything? They said, no. Jesus tells them what to do. Then they have a whole bunch of fish brought in. They had to get all the other fishers to help them. But in all of this, we see what made him now have something to give. What made him? Even, even at the end, when Jesus was getting ready to go, he was talking to Peter and the disciples, and he Peter gets mad at Jesus again. Next time he's getting mad at Jesus. He says, Peter, do you love me? Feed my lamb. Yes, you know I love you. Ask him again, Peter, do you love me? Feed my sheep. Yes, I love you. Peter, do you love me? And then it said, this time he got mad. He said, Jesus, I've told you three times I love you. Now, you imagine that maybe he cursed there again doesn't say he didn't it doesn't say he did but this time he was probably cursing at Jesus I told you I love you how many times I have to tell you I love you feed my lamb in all of this we see that Peter was weak he had problems so what was it that led up to this what was it that led up that he had something to give What was it that led up to this that he had something that he could speak to this man and lift him up and he'd be healed in the name of Jesus? He had an encounter. What happened? Jesus, as he was getting ready to leave, he told him to go to the upper room and wait until you be endued with power. And he was talking to him. Jesus ascended up to heaven. And they're still there worried. Still saying, I thought Jesus was here now. He was, the kingdom was going to be set up. And he's leaving again. The angel said, why do you stand there gazing? Do you not know as you see him going, he's coming back? Jesus is coming back. He's coming back. We've heard it all of our life. Jesus is coming back. I want you to know he's coming back. He's coming again. He's coming back. And now they do what Jesus told them to do. They go up to the upper room. Acts chapter 1, they go in the upper room. They had to, first of all, they get up there and they take care of their business. They had to choose another disciple to take Judas' place. They did that. Then it said they was in one mind. They was one accord and they was praying. They was praying. And then Acts chapter 2 it says suddenly on the day of Pentecost there was a sound of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house. They began to speak with tongues as gave them utterance. This is the beginning of what changed Peter's life. He went from this weak, unbelieving, temper person, lack of faith. Now he's got faith, and what was the beginning of it? Number one, he prayed. They united together and prayed. There was a follower of Jesus done what Jesus told him to do, to go in the upper room and pray. We want revival in our land. We want revival in our church. What must we do? One mind, one accord, one unity into prayer and believing and praying that God would restore our hearts and restore our lives and bring us to revival we need. They prayed. And when they prayed, suddenly God moved. Suddenly the Holy Spirit poured out. Suddenly. When you look at this, when, G, when Peter was talking to this lame man, said he spoke to him. He lifted him up. And we see a different word than suddenly. We see immediately, which means the same thing. Suddenly. Immediately. As they prayed, 
the Holy Spirit immediately poured out. As Peter demonstrated his faith and said, in the name of Jesus, I have what you need. Rise up and walk. And he demonstrated and helped him up. What happened? Immediately, he was healed. We need some immediates in our life. We need some suddenlies in our life. We used to need some miracles in this church. We need a move of the Spirit. But what must we do? What we must do, first of all, what they did, they got in one mind, got in one accord, took care of all the business that needed to be taken care of, and then they got on their knees and prayed, 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 prayed. And when the, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, what happened next? But Peter, all the people was amazed. They heard. Everyone heard them in their own language. What? Praising and magnifying God. They did not speak all these other languages. But yet every language heard them telling about the goodness of God. Telling them about the magnitude of God. Telling them about the grace of God. And then they, mis they, they marveled and was amazed. When God does a work in our hearts and our lives, it brings amazement to those around. That's twice you see amazement. Right here when the Holy Spirit was poured out, they was amazed. When Peter and John dealt with the lame man and he rise up and walked, he said, everybody was amazed about this lame man walking. When we have an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ and we're hungry enough that we'll get on our feet, knees and pray and seek God's praise, seek God's face, God will do miraculous things. And do suddenly things in our heart and our life. Who was the one that got up and preached? It said Peter. But Peter. Standing up with the eleven. All of them stood up. All the twelve. But Peter lifted up his voice. And said unto them. He preached 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 and preached and preached and preached. Preached to him about Jesus Christ. And then what happened? Then they gladly received his word, were baptized. And that same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls on the day of Pentecost. When this week Disciple Peter got full of the Holy Ghost. He got hungry for God and praying and got faith. He preached on the day of Pentecost and 3,000 souls were saved. What an amazing miracle. What happened next? Then we see the story next about still talking about the lame man in the next chapter. Still, they were, made, they were talking about it all over the place. Seeing this man leaping and praising God and testifying about the Lord Jesus Christ and the wonderful works of God. Everyone begins to wonder about it and the chief priest and everybody said, what are we going to do with these people? What are we going to do with this people? They're telling about Jesus Christ. They're testifying about Jesus Christ. They healed this uh, lame man. And now he's walking and praising God. And telling about the love of God. What are we going to do with them? He said we're going to have to tell them. That they can't preach Jesus Christ no more. That's what the world's trying to do today. Trying to take Jesus Christ out of everything. Take Jesus out of school. Take Jesus out of a, your, and God we trust out of our money. They're trying to take Jesus out of everything. And what we need today more in our life and our heart is to tell everybody about Jesus. Because Jesus is the answer. He is the answer. They said we'll tell them that they won't tell anything about Jesus Christ. So they get them. And then this lame man's there telling them and praising God and everything is done for me. How could they do anything? So the only thing they did, they said, just don't talk about Jesus Christ no more, please. Don't do it no more. 
what does it do then? Peter gets up and preaches to him again. Tells him all about they're the ones that killed him. You're the one that crucified Jesus. You're the one that did all of this. And then what happened after that? What happened after that? The next chapter that there you see as he preached again, it said 5,000 souls got saved. Right then. 3,000 on the day of Pentecost. And then the next day, whenever it was that he was preaching about the lame man, 5,000. And fear fell upon each of them. What's the difference? What made a difference in Peter? What made him different? What made him think this one that denied Christ and one, one to get mad at Jesus for asking him so many times, do you love me? Then done all of these things, he gets impatient. But now he's miraculously used of God. Sees 3,000 souls saved when he's preaching on the day of Pentecost. Then he does this miracle, performs this lame man, performs a miracle in Jesus' name. And then he preaches about Jesus after that and 5,000 souls is saved. What was the difference? Peter, Peter said, silver and gold, I have none. But what I have, I've given to you. Jesus took that three and a half years and he told him over and over again, it's not money. It's not silver and gold. It's not riches. It's not these things. You must deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. And as as you get to this, you see that Jesus told the disciple, told Jesus, told Peter. He told him at the beginning, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And then in the book of Acts, chapter 1 there, or John, the last chapter, as he's talking to them about Peter denying Christ the three times that he said, if you love me, after that, he said, if you love me, feed my sheep. Then he said, follow me. What was the difference? He told him right at the very beginning. He told him at the end. What was the difference? This time, he finally got it. If we want victory in our heart, we want victory in our life. Follow me. Follow the Lord Jesus Christ. When you think about Paul, remember Paul, Saul, whose name became Paul? He was running about trying his best to kill every believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. Everyone that was a Christian. Going to kill them all. He had a decree in his hand that he was going to go and issue it. While he was going... The light came and blinded him. And the light, a voice came out of the light. And it, Jesus, Paul said, who are you? I said, is Jesus the one that you're persecuting? You know what happened with Paul? You see the change in Paul's life. He became a missionary. He became one of the greatest missionaries. But if you read in the book of of Paul's writings Paul wrote majority of the New Testament but listen to him and say what does he say follow me as I follow Christ now where did Paul get that from Paul wasn't a disciple he must have got it from Peter and John and the other ten disciples, they finally got a hold of it. From the very beginning, they said, Jesus said, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. At the end, he said, follow me. So what was the message that they must have been preaching? Follow Jesus. Jesus is what you need. Jesus is what you need. Jesus is what you need. So finally, Paul got it. After Jesus, he was blinded. 
And he heard Paul and he heard Peter and John and all the others talking about following him. The thing about Paul, he said that I may know him. Know who? Know Jesus. Do you want victory in your heart and your life? The Lord's been dealing with my heart and the Lord's been dealing with my life. I want something to give. Silver and gold have I none, but what I have I give unto you. I want something to give. So I've been asking the Lord, how do I get this? He said, Rick, follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Jesus said, is there any heavy laden Come unto me, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Lean on me, and I will give you rest. We need victory in our heart. We need victory in our lives. We need victory in every situation we face. How do we get victory? By loving the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all, all your mind. Love the Lord. Follow Him. Follow Him. Get to know Him. What did they do? They went to the upper room and prayed. Then after that, it said, what did they do in the book of Acts? They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, prayer, fellowship, communion, and study of the word. They continued in prayer daily. And it said souls were added to the church daily. So what do we need to do to have what Peter said? Silver and gold have I none. But what I have I give unto you. That is this. Prayer. 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 One mind, one accord, united together in prayer. If we would unite together in one mind, in one accord, God will do supernatural things in our midst. If you look at Peter, you remember Peter and John, this one we're talking about? Remember a little later on in the book of Acts? It says, as they walk by people, the shadow of them falling on them, they were healed. They didn't have to touch them. They didn't have to say anything to them. Shadow walking by. They were healed. What an impact it would make on this world. If we Christians had enough relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, following Him, praying, getting full of the Holy Ghost, believing in Him, spending time with Him, what gave them the power that the shadow? Following Him, spending time with Him in prayer, spending time with Him in the Word, spending time with Him. Silver and gold have I none. But what I have, I give unto you. What changed Peter is that he realized he needed to follow the Lord. Find a relationship with him. Pray. Pray. They continued steadfastly, daily praying. And what happened? Souls were added to to the church daily. What do we need to do? Remember about a month ago on Sunday morning, I preached unto you. I looked for a man that would stand in the gap and make up a hedge. And I talked to you that day also about praying for unsafe loved ones. Church, you know what we need to do more of? Praying. 
prayer. Uniting together in one mind in one accord. Pray. Pray daily. Pray daily. Pray daily. And then God will add to our church daily. We need a new fancy kitchen. You know what we need? Get that? We need that gymnasium over there so that we can have church in the gymnasium while they're building the church in the gymnasium where we're meeting over there we're terrible you know if we'll pray God can do that faster than 10 years if we'll pray as we pray I so come the initiative we got this year is pray Invite, grow. As they prayed, souls were glad and added daily. This is what we need to do tonight. Let's come and find a place of prayer tonight. Kneel at your pew, kneel at the altar, and let's pray that God would change our hearts, that he would give us a love for him like we've never had before, that we would follow him in everything that we do, in everything that we say.
thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. What I have, I give unto you. We've got to have something to give. We've got to pray. Get full of the Holy Ghost. Read the Word of God. And watch God do what He thinks He does. Amen. God bless you. And don't forget Sunday. Sunday school. 10 o'clock. Morning worship, 1045. And Sunday night we have prayer meeting at 530. We have church at 6. I don't think we have going on anything going on this weekend, right? Prayer for students Sunday night. Thank you. Bring your grandchildren, your sons, your neighbors, your nephew, your nieces. All the children that we can get needs prayer for school. So bring someone with you Sunday night for prayer. God bless you. Remember to go with God and I can guarantee you he'll go with you. God bless you.